How's it going, guys? We got one person in here. How's it going, Dells? Good to see you. Mark Remick, how's it going? Ugh. You guys tried this stuff lately or yet? Natter days? Not my style. How's it going, Todd? How are you guys tonight? What have you guys been up to? You been out uh, doing any fishing? You just enjoying the nice weather? It's been pretty nice here the last few days. Uh, all weekend at, uh, well, Saturday, Sunday, it was in the 70s. You still got a foggy? Yeah, I do. I do still have a foggy headlight on the Articat. How's it going, Wisconsin Outlook? Good to see you. Yeah, it was super nice here all weekend uh, in the 70s. In the 70s, like every day this weekend, I uh, got a little ring going on here today. It was uh, scattered showers yesterday, not too much. Oh, you got more flooding, Todd? A lot of rain down by you, Todd, or what's going on down there? He's off on a paper towel and it's still clear. Okay, I've, I've heard that before, but uh, I never even thought of it, of it on the uh, Articat. I know people have done it on their headlights on their vehicles before. Wisconsin River is 20 foot up. Wow. Yeah, we, there was a dam south of here that busted the other day and flooded the campground and everything. Flooded a creek and then that flooded the campground. Try white vinegar. Yeah, hopefully we don't get too much rain here uh, in the next week or so. Maybe that stuff will go down a little bit. Unfortunately, this time of year, we get tons of rain. So I'm a little skeptical. We got my daughter's birthday party coming up, and chances of it getting rained out is pretty good. Wisconsin River south of Pentonwell and Castle Rock is the highest I've ever seen. Wow. How's it going, Pike Lake Kenny? So I'm wearing a Brewer's jersey tonight uh, for no particular reason. See if it's still fitted because I haven't worn it in years. It does, I, which I couldn't believe. That was a miracle. But uh, might be going to a, my first ever Brewer's game here in uh, it's gonna be a week or so. It's on May 1st, something like that. I think we might go. But, uh, it's like a 6.40 p.m. game against the Colorado Rockies. I've never been to a game before, so I'm looking forward to that. So if you guys, Thinking about going to a Brewers game. I'm going to be there. Maybe we could uh, meet up, say hi. Wow, that's crazy. I, we don't have like any flooding here. I mean, aside from that dam breaking, which was a freak accident, you know, and that's not affecting much. It's just a small creek below, and um, there's a pond dam that broke, so it's it's nothing too bad. Brewer games are a blast. Yeah, I've never been to one. I, I'm, uh, I, you know, and it's embarrassing to say, but I'm not much of a baseball fan. I've been trying to get into them this year, and every single game that I've watched, we've lost. So I get some pretty good ribbon from my buddies about that. 
but uh yeah so i mean oh, hopefully we don't lose it but uh yeah i've been i've been trying to get into it you know yelich and stuff he's playing well and the whole team's playing well but yelich is on a superstar level right now and uh looking forward to it anyways seems like a lot of fun and the tickets seem pretty cheap too so can't really pass it up you can stop by my house for a beer just might todd uh do they want you to stop watching? Yeah, they do. They tell me turn it off the turn off the game every single time I watch it. But we've also lost games that I haven't watched too, so you know it's not all my fault. But we're doing well. Um 13 and 10, I believe, which isn't you know the greatest, but we're up there in the power rankings, still top of the central, I believe. Yelich has been eating his cheese curds. Yeah, and Cardinals too, that's for sure. What's he got, like 9, 10 home runs? 8 for sure against the Cardinals. He's on pace to break the single month record for home runs in April. He's got 11 against the Cardinals? Yeah, yeah, he's doing well. That's crazy. I used to watch the, I used to watch baseball a lot, like 15 years ago. And uh, I don't know, maybe it hasn't been that long, but it seems like 15 years ago. It's probably about right. Um, like when the Braves had Chipper Jones and Andrew Jones and Greg Maddox. And and uh, I was kind of a Braves fan then. And uh, for no good reason, you know, just a Braves fan. I like Chipper Jones. And uh, these players nowadays are huge. Like I, I haven't really watched a game since then. And these players are enormous. Like these guys could be blind backers in the NFL, and it kind of surprised me. It's like every game I turn on to, there's multiple home runs, and that was wasn't the case then. You know, like the game has definitely evolved since I watched it last. Pretty fun to watch now, but uh, it was fun to watch then too. You know, a lot of the the runs that are scored now are a lot of times off home runs. Things look like looks like a UFC fighter. Yeah. <laughs> You're watching the live stream on a traffic jam. Well, it's one way to watch it. That's for sure. One way to beat traffic too is sit there and enjoy yourself instead of getting out and beating somebody. That's what I want to do. Traffic jam or something like that. I get horrible road rage over anything. I don't know why I get really angry in traffic and anything anybody makes uh, violations. That's something that bugs me is like the, all the uh, police around here. Anyhow, it's like they don't care about any you know traffic violations or anything like that. All they care about is giving out OWIs, which you know is a huge problem in Wisconsin. But uh, yeah, it's constantly bad weather. You know, low light conditions, stuff like that, where people should have their headlights on. They don't. I, it's illegal. It's against the law. Cops never pull anybody over for it. I always, almost every time I drive, I see somebody with the headlight out. I see people speeding and nobody ever gets pulled over, but they give out a record amount of OWI tickets every week, it seems like, in the newspaper. Smelt running yet? I have no idea. I've never, uh, never gone smelting. I've always wanted to. Uh, my dad used to uh, be pretty close knit with the uh, Amish community around here, and uh, we always got a bunch of smelt from them. Always seemed like a fun time, good eating, and they make good bait too. So I've always wanted to do it, but I never have. You got the storage locker getting out your fly fishing rod. There you go. Yeah, opener is coming up pretty quick here. I'm going to have to get out. I want to do some bluegill fishing when they start moving into the bays too. It uh, another thing too, it's officially open water here. Um, yeah, it's officially open water here. Anyways, we we're uh, out kind of looking for houses the other day, looking to buy something different and looking to see what was sale around town. You know, that's not listed on like the apps and stuff that we look at. And uh, Thursday, Prairie Lake was all the way open. 
but uh, Big Shatek was uh, completely locked up still. Well, I mean, aside from the shore, otherwise it was ice all, all the way across. And then uh, <clears throat> by Friday, my wife, she was downtown. She told me that uh, Shatek was all the way open, all the way across that quick. Like, what? And uh, I didn't really pay attention. I kind of forgot to look Friday night on my way home from work when I came through town. And then uh, Saturday morning, I happened to look and the light was just, or the sun was just coming up so I could just see the lake a little bit. And uh, sure as shit, all the, the whole water or the whole lake was all the way open. So yeah, there's no ice here left on the chain anyways. I don't know about where you guys are at, but yeah, we're finally out here. So yeah, that's something new that uh, we're doing here. We got a realtor coming over on Wednesday. They're gonna kind of tell us what we could ask for the house here. And um, we're gonna be looking for something different around the area. Um, not sure how much we wanna spend yet, but definitely gotta be bigger than this place. Uh, hopefully in the country. Country is not necessarily you know, a need, but it would definitely be nice. Yeah, we didn't even get any rain on uh, Thursday, though, Kenny. Uh, just, it was real warm. Uh, might have had a little breeze in there, too, to help. But, uh, yeah, it was real warm. I think it was like Friday. I think it was probably close to 70. All right, we're going to get to your guys' questions we had here. We had uh, questions from two different people this week. So one person other than Wisconsin Outlook, which was surprising. So thank you guys for those. Um, Wisconsin Outlook had three questions. He asked, what was my favorite class in high school? And I mean, definitely uh, gym class, you know, that was a pretty easy one to pass for me. But other than gym class, I really just liked certain teachers. Um, <laughs> Todd's was lunch. Yeah, that's a pretty easy one too. Um, I just, I just had respect for a certain, uh, a certain couple of teachers or whatever. So, uh, um, science class I liked with one teacher and stuff. So, so yeah, that was, um, Mr. Lorenz in uh, science class anyways. Yeah, I liked his class cause, uh, he was a cool guy. One of the nicest guys I've ever met. And, uh, Oh, well, for high school, I guess that was about it. But yeah, gym class, usually all the way through school. I like playing sports, doing all that stuff. In high school, too, we got to build uh, fishing rods and go on uh, canoeing trips and stuff like that. Uh, favorite dish to pass at a potluck? Has to be, especially right now, um, hands down, has to be my barbecue pork mutt burn ends. Um, Excuse the dog, he's dying over here. Um, he got into something. He's been gagging and dry heaving all day. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Um, yeah, so uh, my pork butt burn ends, a lot of people make pork belly burn ends, but uh, my pork butt burn ends, I've taken two, like three um, get togethers, potlucks in the last couple of years. And every time I take a big crock pot full. And every time, every piece of it's been eaten. So uh, those always are a big hit. Everybody loves them. I get tons of compliments on them. I really like them. I always make extra and keep some here at the house. That way I have some for myself. So uh, definitely those. Um, I'm going to do a video on those at some point uh, here in the warmer weather. And so you guys can see how I do it too. Um, you guys will get my recipe on it. Uh, there's tons of videos on pork belly and pork butt burn ends on YouTube, but I do it a little bit different. And not to toot my own horn, but I, I would believe that mine are going to be better than a lot of theirs. Mine's really sweet, though. A lot of guys put in a little bit of spice and stuff to it to uh, give it a little heat, but I believe mine are probably better. Uh, favorite way to catch suckers? Um, favorite way to catch suckers? Uh, we had success with uh, doing it just like I rigged uh, for like. If I was to go catfishing, um, it's not a very uncommon rig. All I do is tie my main line to a swivel and then 
about a foot, foot and a half section of, uh, you know, just whatever I got for fluorocarbon on my rod. I just cut off a, you know, a foot or foot and a half of it, tie it back on top of that swivel. So I got my main line swivel, another foot or foot and a half section of fluorocarbon. And then I put on a very small uh, circle hook. Well, and I, I got ahead of myself there. And right before that swivel, I'll put on, uh, I forget what size it is, uh, an egg sinker anyways, depending on how fast the current and everything is. I'll throw that on. So the egg sinker will sit on the bottom and uh, that circle hook will float up a little mm -hmm. bit or sit on the bottom, depending on uh, how much current again there is. But uh, then I'll just put night crawlers on there. Usually have success doing that. Um, just gotta get out the, at the right time though, which uh, gets us to the next question. Anthony Outdoors, when is the best time to target suckers? And a lot of times here in Wisconsin, it's usually right at the first warm up. You know, we get, you know, was it March 10th here? I mean, where I'm at anyways, we got our the last main snowstorm of the year. Well, I guess we got one here a couple weeks ago, but it didn't amount to much here. There was a lot of hype around it, you know, it was supposed to get up to 22 inches. I don't know what everybody else got, but here we didn't get much. We got like maybe four to five and it was gone within a couple of days. But March 10th, we had a last serious snowstorm that stuck. And then um, after that, like the first real warm days is when the suckers start running. And then, uh, but it can be different every year. You know, your first warm up, but uh, a few years ago, that was at the end of April, like right now is when they're running and we had a lot of success and other times it'll be the beginning of April. So uh, there's not a set time. You just got to get out and check for yourself. Um, but it's always uh, an issue as far as, you know, rivers and stuff, how high the water is. Sometimes you just cannot get your bait to sit on the bottom. You know, I've been in my spots before where I know I'm going to catch suckers, but the water's so high, you can't, you cannot get your bait to sit there. I put on tons of, tons of weight and cast it and it just bounces all the way down the river. So uh, you just gotta find a different spot at that point. But yeah, that's that's a pretty good rig to go by. Um, caught a lot off it. Also caught other fish while I've been doing it too, smallmouth and walleye and stuff like that. See you later, Dells. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, uh, well, Dells is gone now, but uh, they have fishing classes in school. Um, a lot of a lot of schools even have ice fishing tournaments and stuff like that. We didn't have that when I was in school. I don't even know if my town has a ice fishing team or anything, but uh, some schools do. I actually was selling a pop-up shack uh, a couple of years ago, and the guy from, I think it was Prairie Farm High School, they have an ice fishing team, and uh, he actually bought it for the team. <laughs> How many different types of suckers are there? Uh, there's a lot, I believe. A lot more than what you'd think. A typical around here is a red horse sucker, but I, I'm not sure on the exact number off the top of my head, Kenny, but uh, it's quite a few. 99.9% .9 of the time though, you catch them around here, they're gonna be a red horse. Ugh, I gotta power my way through this beer, this Natter Day stuff. A little too fruity. You guys looking forward to the draft? That's coming up this week. What? Thursday night, I think. I expect some moves to be made. I don't I don't foresee the Packers keeping both of our first round draft picks. I mean I know Gutenkust he's uh a different animal than what uh Ted Thompson was, but uh, I don't. I don't expect us to keep both of them. I mean, we got a lot of holes to fill. That's one way to do it. But we could also trade trade them away too. Yeah, Bucks are playing tonight too, uh, and the Brewers are playing here real shortly too. So I believe I believe the Brewers are playing tonight. I think six thirty, and I believe the Bucks start at like seven, something like that. But yeah, the draft is. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I expect us to make at least one trade. Anyways, I don't know if it'll for sure be the, one of the first round draft picks, but uh, um, I'm, I'm guessing. I don't know if we're going to trade down or trade up or, or pick up uh, a player in the process or not. I don't think we have a ton of cap space. 
but uh, we're gonna have to I think we will make some moves uh, we got a lot of holes to fill we got you know a tight end is an issue I mean we got two decent tight ends but uh, I don't expect them being around after this year either one of them um, then uh, uh, the guard situation you know we could use another running back uh, middle linebacker safety defensive line there's a ton tons of holes on the team and to have that many rookies playing I mean I know we had a lot of rookies playing last year and uh, but you know we're trying to make a push at the Super Bowl again and uh, doing it with that many rookies starting is going to be almost impossible and a lot of people are saying that we're going to be taking tight end uh, at 12 uh, the, one of the tight ends from Iowa there and I don't see that that makes a lot of sense unless Mercedes Lewis gets cut like in training camp or something uh, but uh, draft a tight end and have him sit behind Graham and Mercedes Lewis with a 12th overall pick is kind of absurd to me like why would you waste the 12th overall pick on a guy that's gonna be riding the bench the, almost the entire year you know barring injuries and if somebody gets caught smoking dope or something I have kids I want to coach, at least an ice fishing team. Open water, too, is fun. Or if I can. Should be a good one at 12. Yeah, I hope so. I hope we get, you know, players that can jump in right away and make a, a big impact like uh, Jair did last year. And, you know, like some of the other rookies left around the league do. You know, like uh, Colts had two awesome uh, rookies last year. They had a linebacker and an offensive lineman, you know. And then... Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, Ezekiel Elliott and a lot of players make, you know, they play like veterans the rookie year. It's been a long time since we've had a, a big rookie come in, you know, make an actual case for rookie of the year or anything. Nothing since like Eddie Lacy or uh, uh, seemed like we had another linebacker or something that was real close to being defensive rookie of the year a while back, but kind of slipped in my mind. Might as well call it what it is, a rebuild. Packers are easily two to three years out of Super Bowl contention. Uh, it's debatable, uh, Anthony's outdoors. Um, it, and we'll see how everything, how everybody reacts to the new coaches. You know, uh, the defense definitely showed some promise last year. Our secondary was top five in the league, uh, but our room defense was the problem. So with our two new outside linebackers, can our defense, our run defense get better? Um, it would have been nice to see Jake Ryan come back because he was excellent in run defense, but they let him go. So if our run defense can get better, our defense should be pretty good. And our offense is always good. I mean, Rodgers played on a broken leg last year. Literally every game he had a broken leg last year. And he still put up like 4,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, two interceptions. Set the all-time record for consecutive passes without an interception. Still had a great year. Everybody bashed him because he was playing like crap. Turns out he had... Uh, partially torn MCL and a broken leg and feuding with his coach apparently and guys couldn't get open. You know, you watch Rodgers throw 50 balls and chances are the receivers are actually open two different times um, with a new scheme that isn't outdated like McCarthy's was. You know, everybody knew what kind of coverage to run against the Packers. Um, ever since that Broncos game, the year that uh, Jordy got injured uh, in preseason, Everybody just ran uh, man coverage on us. They bumped us at the line, and our receivers are too slow to get open. Ever since that year, our receivers have not been able to get open. Um, Wade Phillips, he kind of drew up the blueprint on how to stop a Mike McCarthy offense, and we've never really recovered from that. So that being said, I think this is going to be, uh, you know, fresh breath of air in uh, Packer land anyways, I think. We're going to run the ball a lot more and get Aaron Jones some carries. So I think our offense will be okay. Um, get the play action going finally. It's another thing that's been lacking in the last couple, two, three years is the play action. Almost every time Rogers throws, you know, tries running a play action pass, he'll get sacked almost instantly. It's not fooling anybody because Mike McCarthy's offense is so outdated and he didn't evolve. Martinez should have been a rookie of the year linebacker. Yeah. Yes, it should be. Lots of blacking with Mike McCarthy. Yeah, I mean, it, it's no 
surprised what uh, a lot of the Packers plays were going to be running. You know, these coaches and teams and players, especially the smart players, they watch film and they pick up on what the Packers are doing pretty easily. When you're running a scheme that doesn't ever change and you just run the same plays all the time, like it's third and one, and you're just sending guys on streaks down the field and then Rodgers doesn't pick up the check down, pretty easy to stop them. It's like every time there was a third and one last year, they're just running streaks down the field. Like, why not try actually going for the first instead of trying to fool them and think you're going for the first and then throwing a deep ball? Like, that doesn't work. And then Rodgers is scrambling around trying to find somebody on one leg and, and uh, ended up having to throw the ball away. You're that or throw an interception. But I, I, I'm uh, pretty excited for it anyways. I think our defense is going to be better with those two new outside linebackers. Um, our new safety too. Uh, hopefully we get a safety. That's uh, that's what I hope we go for first. I really do not want to see Kamon Williams playing free safety. I only done with that thing. Miller Light now. You guys all planning on uh, going out for opening fishing? Season opener is coming up here, what, a couple weeks, two, three weeks? I won't be able to go out for opening fishing, but I hope to get out within a week or so after. Uh, opening fishing, of course, lands on a weekend, so I have to work. But uh, soon after that, hopefully, I get out. What do you think of all the X? Packers that retired in a row. Uh, I assume you're talking like Jordy and Sitton and Lang and uh, John Kuhn. They're all great players. I wish um, we could have kept all of them, honestly. You know, we don't even run a fullback in Green Bay anymore. Last year we had Kendricks running fullback a lot of the time. Um, Jordy might have been let go a year too early in my opinion, not that I'm saying I want him to be back because everybody says that they want him to be back because I think he's just going to, you know, if, if we resigned him and brought him back, he would just be taking snaps away from the younger guys. But, uh, you know, and the younger guys need to progress. The only way they're going to do that is by playing with Rodgers. But uh, he could have helped definitely last year, that's for sure. Especially when, like, Geronimo went out and Cobb didn't play most of the year. Stuff we could, really could have used him. Um, one of the all-time great receivers, too, Jordy Nelson was. Um, and then John Kuhn, yeah, obviously great, fan favorite, did a great job, pro bowler, all pro, uh, great fullback. And then the, the two offensive linemen, um, granted, if you know, if we were to sign them, we would have had to pay them a lot of money, but they were excellent, uh, both pro bowlers, excellent players. Uh, what was our biggest flaw last year and on the offense was – the two guards, um, well, and that and Blaga always being hurt, but two guard positions give up a lot of sacks last year. Uh, nothing closes here on the Winnebago system. Gotta go. All right, we'll see you next time, Todd. Uh, anything that's outdoors. Wanted to go. I'll be hiking in the uh, Smokies. Heading to Willow Foliage for some pike action on May 17th. That sounds like fun. Anthony, if you uh, take some pictures, be sure to post them on our social media, uh, our Facebook pages, and or get a hold of me somehow. We'll get those. If you want to send in some pictures, we'll get them on our uh, all subscriber live uh, slideshow. We're going to be doing that. So if you guys got any photos you want, featured in there. Be sure to put them on the Facebook page or something or get a hold of me and we'll get them on there. It doesn't matter how many you got as long as they're outdoor related. We'll get them on there. Uh, ours is on the 13th. The water is still too high and fast. Yeah, that's understandable. Getting pontoon ready this weekend. to get your boat from your sister's place. 
I actually dropped the price again on my ice shack because I noticed that it had a flat tire the other day. Um, my dad actually backed it in the driveway the last time and uh, he kind of parked it like one tire in the driveway and one in the dirt. And I thought maybe just the ground was soft over there as the frost was going out and everything. But uh, so the shack was leaning pretty hard the one way and I didn't really go check it out or anything. But uh, yeah, it turns out it had a flat tire. Jeez, now I gotta go, you know, spend money on a new tire. I tried airing it up, but it came off the bead and everything. So uh, yeah, I'm like, screw it. I'm just gonna lower the price on it. Somebody see if somebody will buy it, you know, with a flat tire. So I actually dropped the price down to $800 on it now. I was asking $2,000 a couple months ago. Things gotta go. I don't really care at this point. Especially if I move, then, you know, I gotta worry about finding a place for that, maybe at the new house and figuring out the tire situation when I should be hauling everything around without taking off work, you know? Put the new throttle in my boat and balance the trailer and put some tension on the springs. Put a prop on Thursday. Looks brand new. Nice. Those can be expensive. You can find them used. It's a good deal on the side of the road. <laughs> there you go. That's even cheaper. Alrighty guys, we hit the half hour mark. Uh, you guys got any questions before we cut her off here? Alrighty guys, well we're gonna cut her off here. Uh, nice, my dad has Peggy's his props refurbished at the same place for 30 years. Not going to make it any live streams for a while now. Kid just starts Little League now. Okay, Pike Lake Kenny. Well, thanks for stopping in anyways. Uh, we'll see you when we can. We'll, uh, we'll be sure to show up on your live streams on Wednesday for the life of me. I always forget about them. And I always see them and watch them after uh, they upload anyhow. Good hanging out with everybody. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice talking to you guys. Thanks for showing up. All you guys that are always in here, I really appreciate it. Um, that's it for me for the night. We're going to go watch some brewers here and the Bucks and flip back and forth and end the night that way. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time.